this and we're all kind of getting started on this just to have a very general um you know like overview of what we're doing how we can get started um some troubleshooting if we need to um and then on fridays we're going to have the telepracticing where we can share um resources tips things that have been working things that have not been working um it's been extremely helpful i think that you know kind of the communities of, of therapists that have come together and um you know share everything with with each other of course being ot's and pt's you know we were not typically as experienced as a speech therapist with with telespeech or i'm sorry with teletherapy so it's been a little more of a learning curve for us and including myself and i will be the first to say that you know in the beginning i feel like my sessions were a, a little rough i don't know if you guys feel the same way but it's taken me a, a little bit i feel like to get it used to it and to figure out how it works also for the kids because you know they're so used to being in our rooms being one-on-one -on -one, and now they're at home so it really adds another element that i feel like is is challenging to get um to get past hold on one second guys looks like can you all see me does it look like my camera went out for a minute um but i am going to share the powerpoint now let me see. Okay. All right. So you all can see this, all right? Yes. Okay. All right. Hold on. There we go. Okay. So some goals for today. We're just going over the basics of teletherapy, getting started tips. Um, you know, introductions to the telepractice resources. You should all um, have an invitation to join the Teams group. I have just added a couple things to Teams so far, and um, you guys can feel free to expand on that and add whatever, you know, whatever you would want. Okay, so, you know, up here, this is kind of like our support and, and um, you know, group team here. We have some resources, some Q&As, um, you know, the channels inside the, the Teams group. And then, of course, we have the telepracticing trainings that are going to be Fridays at that. That should say one. And then we're going to do tips there, you know, question and answers, resource demos. I know we've all kind of been collecting a lot of really great resources throughout all of this that we can share. Um, and Leanne, do they have access to the the pre-K and the autism channels? Yes, they do. Okay. Yes. Okay. Just making Sorry. sure that um, we do. So, you know, I added a couple forms like um, an example COVID-19 contact form and things like that. But some of these may be specific to your county. Like, for instance, a, um, a consent, like the parental consent for using Zoom or Teams for video conferencing. I did not add that in there because I didn't know if you guys would have those specifically for your county. Okay, so then again, we went over some of the forms. So in your teams, you know, you can go to the files and those will be there under um, the file section. Again, I've added some resources, a couple for OT and PT that I will share with you guys here in a little bit. Um, the sample contact form is in the teens. Um, I'm sorry, guys, sorry, this is being really glitchy for me. Just wait one second. Okay, we'll just we'll just do it this way. Um, so you'll have your sample contact form that that's just one that I generated myself for, you know, contacting parents of getting phone numbers, email addresses, do they have internet? Do they not have internet? You know, things like that. We can kind of keep track of all of it. And we can also um, turn that into special ed directors. You know, I've found that really helpful whenever I can just turn it into the team and say, hey, I don't have a number for this kid. Has anyone been able to contact him? Does anyone have an active number? Things like that. Okay. So the consent form, um, again, you know, we, we've kind of developed our own consent form, but I have also used county specific consent forms. So that's something that you will have to um, talk to your special director about personally. 
OK, so the resource notebook, um, Libby, I know you you made this for the speech therapist and I know uh, Rhea told me that you're going to make this for the OTs and PTs as well, but it's a really nice um, notebook here where we can add um, activities, resources, things like that kind of categorized. And we are going to get that up and running this week, so we'll have that for Friday. Now, um, Leanne, you guys are are using mainly Teams, correct? Or are you also using Zoom? It's up to the individual county special education director to determine what platform they use. But for our trainings, we've been using Teams. OK, and I know that, you know, you guys are all very well trained on Teams and doing the video conferencing that way. I have added um, Zoom resources into this PowerPoint. If you guys want that, feel free to email me and I will send that to you. But um, I know that mainly that the you know Board of Ed is using Teams, so I know that you guys would probably already have a lot of trainings and things for that too, correct? Yes, we've been trying to do that, and Mark Moore also has trainings as well. Okay, that's what I figured. So we won't really do. Would you like for me to go over the Zoom um, slides, Leanne, or would you rather do that later? Maybe we could do that later <clears throat> and the people who, who do need the Zoom slides can email you. I'm sure you have your contact information at the end yes. um, so they could email you if that's OK. Yes. OK, so another um, little form I put in here is, you know, typical teletherapy etiquette. And I know it's extremely hard right now with people that are home and where you have kids and you have animals and, you know, everything is crazy, but we're still trying as you know hard as we can to maintain a professional etiquette of you know i know your kids may pop in every once in a while but trying not to have kids in the background trying not to have um you know a lot of pet interference and i mean i'll be the first to tell you that i've used my dog as a as a reinforcer and it's one of the great reinforcers where i feel like a lot of kids really respond to animals and i can use him and say okay if we get through this you know i'll let you meet my dog and it's worked really well, but also, um, you know, in its own place and time, not just I, you know, have him crawling all over me the whole time to where it's distracting. Um, you know, also be mindful of what's in the background. Um, do you have sensitive documents in the background? Like I know, um, you know, whenever I first started doing some sessions, I realized that, you know, behind me, I may have had lists of counties with therapists or, you know, whatever else for my own reference that, you want to make sure all that stuff is taken down out of you. Um, typically, you know, we don't like to sit in a bed or on a couch. It'll look like you're laying down. You know, you want to try to be in a an office or, you know, an organized space that's less distracting. But also, again, I know right now that, you know, we're at home and it's, it's very difficult to manage all of these things perfectly. But you can look over that and just get some general ideas for etiquette. But um, Andy, I hate to interrupt, but we have some people who are saying they're not seeing the slides. Okay, uh, I'm see. seeing the slides, but I'm not quite sure why some people are not. My question would be, are people calling in? Are you on a phone or on your computer? Okay. OK, let, let me try resharing it and sharing it again. OK, did that change anything? Yes. OK. I know we we have had really glitchy Internet the past week or so, so I'm hoping that holds out here. OK, they're seeing it now. Mm -hmm. OK, OK, yep. good. Yep. OK, so, you know, some general activities, um, you know, I, I don't know about you guys, but especially my my little ones in the beginning, I had a really hard time keeping them engaged and, you know, keeping activities that I felt like really worked for them and they were, you know, um, interacting with me. So, you know, for my pre-K and kindergarten students, I have started splitting them up into two 15-minute sessions where I think it, it runs much easier. Um, I feel like the activities are shorter. They can pay attention. And I feel like after 15 minutes, I was I was losing them. And this is, of course, totally up to you. But, um, 
you know, I I have found that, especially with my little guys, I feel like the the more and more we we sign on, the more sessions we do, that they're doing so much better where there are some pre-K kids now I'm getting a 30 minute session out of. And I think, um, you know, it's just really critical to be prepared. And I have been sending parents, you know, kind of an overview of what we're gonna do before the session so that they're prepared, I'm prepared. And that also if we're doing some specific exercise or we're do or we need some sort of equipment that, um, you know, they have it ready where I say, okay, we're going to do this activity, get, you know, a pencil, a piece of paper, your crayons and this and have that ready. Cause I feel like whenever, um, you know, we're, we're there for an activity and I say, okay, do you have crayons and, you know, paper? And they say, oh no, hold on, let me go get that. Well, then I feel like I, I really have lost that attention. So that's like one little tip I'll give you now where I feel like being prepared as possible has been game changing for me in my sessions. Okay, Darlene is still not seeing the slides. Okay, but on the phone for audio to report in it. Okay, Darlene, I can email these to you if that's okay. Or if anyone that you can't see them, I'll just, I'll email them to the group. And we'll also be posting this um, on the um, the videos uh, for the telepractice. So if you can't see the screen, um, it will be recorded. It is being recorded and you can access as the access it that way. Yes. And um, I've been using a lot of online resources. I found some great resources resources on Teachers Pay Teachers. Um, also websites like ABC. Yeah, um, I know boom cards are, are really big right now. But those have been really great with the interaction to have these um, activities that, you know, if, if I I use Zoom, I can give them the ability to interact with the screen as well, or they can click on things. Um, that's also really helped them stay attending. And then, of course, there's so many Facebook groups out right now where they just have a lot of really, really great resources that you can join. Um, and they, I mean, new ones pop up every day. So these are just a couple I screenshotted or I, yeah, I, I took screenshots of. But if you guys want to help, if you need help finding those, feel free to reach out. OK, so some just very general do's and don'ts. Um, like I said, be prepared for the session just as you would any other session. Um, you know, don't forget to include your, your data, your notes. And we're just doing this as, you know, as accurately as we as we possibly can right now. Um, you have to get very good at providing verbal instructions. For PTs and for our OTs, um, when we're doing gross motor activities or you know some sort of specific exercise, I found it very valuable to find, um, if you can find a short video, or I have a book of exercises that have like really great like step-by-step -step instructions and pictures and send that to the parents in advance. That has really helped me um, with that carryover and accuracy whenever completing those exercises. I think it's helped parents as well. Um, and also be, you know, obviously we need to be very, very patient with the parents and the students. Um, I feel like the longer this goes on, the more parents are getting really overwhelmed. And um, I've seen a lot of parents that are just like, kind of on the verge of breakdown because right now they're being, you know, a parent, you know, keeping their kids safe and healthy. They're being an OT, a PT, a speech therapist, a teacher. And it's, you know, really, really starting to wear on them because I think they're so far, they're so afraid of their kids falling behind. And, you know, I've been explaining to each T or I'm sorry, each parent where, you know, give yourself a break. We're going to have bad days with this. We're going to have good days with this. We're all just doing the best we can and, you know, getting as much progress as we can. Um, you know, I mean, I've been telling parents, like I usually have been texting them before the sessions and saying, you know, is today a good day? Because I've had a couple of days where the kids are just off and, you know, they're having a terrible day and that's no big deal. I mean, I always tell them, like, let's reschedule tomorrow. Let's do it later this week just because, um, you know, we don't want to make this so incredibly frustrating for parents and students because we really want that engagement with them. So, again, just being patient with, with everybody, including yourself. This is all new for all, all of us. 
Um, incorporating a reward system in your session. Um, I've used things like them showing me toys, them um, getting to meet their siblings at the end, like I said, a, a pet or just anything they're interested in, little YouTube videos, little clips of stuff that they like um, has been very good at rewarding them. Um, and of course, allowing yourself some time in between each session to prepare for the next. Um, you know, I, I feel like we're all just kind of learning this, um, you know, as we go, but that preparing yourself and, you know, also just um, making like little mini treatment plans has been really, really helpful for me to, to get great sessions. Um, of course, don't the, the distractions as, as best as you can right now. Like I said, I know a lot of people have kids at home and that you can't really avoid that. But it also is very helpful for you because if you know you have all these distractions going on in the session, it's very hard for you to pay attention as well. Um, don't be under underprepared where if you're using games or apps or anything like that, have them up and ready to go. So like I said, if you have a little YouTube clip or something, have that video up. That way you're just ready to click on it, ready to click play. It's not gonna be downloading or buffering while you're doing that. Being distracted, I know being on our computers, you, you know, we have access to everything with like Facebook and music and everything. So try to limit those distractions as much as you can. And then, um, don't forget for about the adult supervision. Really, the, the adult should be present in the room, even if we have like an older child that, um, you know, we're, we don't need them directly to facilitate. It's still, you know, a good rule of thumb to have that adult supervision and the adult right there. And don't forget that, you know, we are mandatory reporters. If you see something in the home that needs to be reported, we are still legally obligated to report that. And obviously don't give up. Keep in mind, this is a different, you know, way of treatment for all of us. We're all getting used to this. Um, you know, we all were thrown into this, you know, one day we were in schools and the next day we're, we're teletherapists. So be easy on yourself. Always reach out if you know you have any questions or you need support. Um, hopefully, you know, with these, with these groups, these teams, and everything we can kind of get some great resources and we can kind of bounce off each other and get some really good ideas okay so differences a little bit from traditional therapy um i you know i've kind of really liked this and i'm sure you guys have too that the opportunity to engage with parents or caregivers um these siblings i think it's been a really great opportunity for parents to to know what we're doing and things like when I send homework home now, I think they're gonna know like what I'm what I'm looking for, what I'm talking about. And I've seen them really like to be so involved with their kids therapy and know exactly what's going on and how we're working on their goals. Um, obviously strengthening your way of explaining things with verbal cues, um, cause you, we, just, we don't have that tactile component that's so critical for OT and PT. Um, managing technology is still difficult, but, you know, try to work out these kinks before you begin, like we talked about being prepared. Um, you know, I've been sending parents all the information of how to log on and everything and trying to connect with them at least once before without doing a treatment session and just making sure they know how to log on, they know what they're doing, they're comfortable with sharing their screen and things like that. So we're not fumbling through that in the middle of a session. Um, and you, you know, you can still do a lot of your favorite activities. We just kind of have to adapt it to a virtual setting. Medicaid billing and TCM, I don't know if you guys have gone over this in your counties, but it's basically using the same five digit CPT codes. You're just going to have a GT modifier at the end of your code. And um, Leanne, I don't know, I've, I've heard, you know, this kind of on and off about OT and BT. OT and PT billing for TCM, is that happening now or are we still kind of waiting to hear on that? <clears throat> you know, I'm not positive about that, but I can check with Kelly Johnson, our Medicaid um, coordinator and see what she says. Okay. I apologize, I should know that. No, that that's okay. I mean, I think it's just been kind of one of those things that, you know, it, they've kind of gone back and forth on, but I just wanted to make sure that I, I hadn't heard one way or another either. So I was just making sure that you hadn't either yet. So if you go into the um, Teams group, here are some things you will see. 
you know, the, the Q&A is great. You can, anyone can go in here and, um, you know, I type these in here. What if a parent no shows are canceled? And you can type your answer in there. Anybody can answer these questions if you know them, if you know the answer. Um, it's a great way to kind of um, filter out those repetitive questions and also that you may have the same question as someone else and you can go in here and see if someone's already answered that. So under files, um, I've added a couple little resources files here. You guys can do whatever you want. I just kind of got these started so you could see where, where things would go, but feel free to go in here and modify them, um, you know, add things if you want to, or, you know, add new things, add links to websites, things like that. Um, okay. Just remembering that we've all got this, <laughs> we're gonna get through this. Um, do you guys have any questions, comments, or anything so far? I don't see any questions in the chat. Okay. Um, what, what I have planned for Friday is we can kind of go over some resources and materials. And also maybe um, I'm going to see if I can if I can schedule a couple of sessions to be video with our OT and our, our OTs and PT so we can see a little um, example of each. But um, how many of you are, are currently already seeing kids virtually? You guys can unmute your mic. Uh, Jennifer O'Neill is there's a few okay. here. You see about three. So yeah, because I was just kind of curious because I, I know with, you know, some of these counties that, you know, it's been everyone's kind of been on a different schedule of starting virtual therapy. So I don't know how many of us had already started therapy versus the people that are getting ready to start therapy. Okay, this is no. someone who's not and is overwhelmed. And uh, Annie, would you share how when you first started, you didn't think this was going to work? I thought that was an interesting uh, point of view. Yeah, I mean, it's it's um, let me get my video up and running here. It is it is kind of interesting because I work so closely with with our company, Integrated Speech Solutions, which is a teletherapy company that I work with telespeech all the time and I have done whole classroom activities where, um, you know, I, I link in with a classroom. We do like a general gross motor activity or things like that. But um, I ha had actually never done one-on-one -on -one direct OT services via teletherapy in my career yet. So, you know, whenever we started this, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I don't, I don't know how this is gonna work, you know, cause we're so used to being right there with our kids, being hands-on. You know, we have that manipulation component that we don't have, um, you know, with telepractice. And also we don't have a trained facilitator, which is really critical for telepractice. And then after my first week or so of, of um, sessions, I mean, I feel like a lot of them were just, the kids were all over the place. They weren't paying attention. I couldn't get them to sit. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is not gonna work. You know, what am I gonna do? But, you know, as the, the time has gone on and I feel like I got more organized and I figured this out more, um, the sessions are getting better and better and better. You know, and now I'm sitting with little kids for 30 minutes and we're, we're getting a lot out of this. And I feel like the parents are getting better at it. The kids are getting better at it. I'm getting better at it. So do not lose faith if, you know, you're starting these telesessions and you just feel like I'm the worst therapist in the world. I can't get this done. You know, we're not making any progress. This is a waste of time. I promise you it, it is not a waste of time and things will get better. And, um, you know, like I said, as time has gone on, I feel like the sessions just keep progressing more and more where they're getting used to, um, you know, these tele sessions the same way they get used to coming into our rooms or coming to our, you know, our space or we do therapy where they know I come to Miss Annie's room. Here's what we do. Here's what we're going to work on. I have to sit and pay attention. They're doing the same exact thing in our tele sessions now. They're starting to remember what I expect, what we used to work on, and it's becoming more of their scheduled routine. Okay, let me see. I'm reading some of the comments here. Okay, so it looks like a lot of you are um, already doing tele sessions. Okay, in Jefferson County, you are pushing into the classroom Zooms. So 
is that the entire classroom or are you are you pushing in with how is that working with PT Annette? Can you hear me now? Yes. This is Annette. Um, for me, uh, we are, I have been emailing activities to parents. Um, we've been sort of told, our parents got very, very overwhelmed um, in the beginning. And so we were all asked to sort of back off and we are providing a minimum of twice a month emails and contacts with activities. And so, for example, um, the week before last, the I sent out um, some really good stretching activities for all of my kids at different for, for their various levels, touched base with all the parents. And so then when I do, we do both individual rooms with like the classroom teacher and the OTPT speech. And then we also do a classroom Zoom where it's like the whole special ed class. Um, and then that's, you can't really touch base individually with them. But um, in the one-on-one -on -one Zooms, we can certainly say, did you get the email? Do you have any questions about that? How are things going? Do you have any questions about the standard that you're using at home? You know, those kinds of things. So we're able to touch base with them and sort of do a consult um, via Zoom. We have not started individual sessions via Zoom. Um, it's just okay. been our caseloads are just too big at this point to try to do that, but we're pushing in when we can to both individual Zoom sessions with kids and teachers and also their classroom Zooms as a touch base kind of a thing. Okay. That's, that's really interesting. I feel like I haven't um, seen that model yet, but I do feel like um, some of the parents are very overwhelmed right now where they're, they're kind of just, I mean, the, the classrooms themselves are a lot of time a day. So to also add that every day and then you add on the services, a lot of parents really are overwhelmed. And there are some times when we log on that I may email them an activity and they say they're in a horrible mood today. Can you just tell me how to do this? And I may kind of coach them through um, how we do this activity, what you know we're expecting from it. And then they complete it in during the week whenever they have time or whenever they feel like they're ready to um sit down and, and attend to it. So, I mean, again, it's just that that flexibility and just being able to roll with it and figure out what each family needs, what's gonna benefit each child because everybody is in kind of various stages of overwhelm, including us, you know, including us. It's been very overwhelming for the therapist as well. I, I have another um, point to make as far as what we're doing. If you don't mind, I apologize. Um, something that I think we have to keep in mind in this conversation is that we are related services and we are related to the education that's happening for that child. And so um, by, by pushing into some of those Zooms with the teacher and the classroom, even though it's not um, your typical classroom situation, you are providing support to the educator as well. And that's, that's our whole part of our role as a related service, not to provide uh, therapy in isolation. Um, and I'm not saying that's what, what teletherapy is doing. You're still working on goals that support the rest of the child's education. I understand all of that. But also that piece of being able to support um, the special educator and the parent within as best you can. And, and that's also, I think, something we have to remember is that we are a related service related to the rest of their education. That's it. I'll, I'll mute myself now. I think that's a very good point. <clears throat> I'm sorry, this is Leanne Bremer. I think this, that's a very good point. And I think we also need to remember that you do not at this time have to offer minute by minute, session by session telepractice to any student. Um, it's all um, should be documented on your distance learning plans within the counties. And if you haven't heard about those, you need to be talking to your special education directors. Um, but that's going to be showing what you're offering to each parent. And it can be individual and you're right. I mean, I've seen, I've been reading the comments as well, and a lot of the parents are overwhelmed and they don't want that camera coming in their home. So if they refuse it, 
you have um, documentation that you offered it. And I'm going to let Annie answer some of these questions about the severe profound students. But I will say that, you know, before you offer therapy to those students, you need to make sure that they're um, capable of participating in the session. And if you think they're not and you can talk with a parent about it and make it come to a decision, then that can be documented on that distance learning plan, too, that you're not going to offer that at this time because it's not appropriate. Everything is not appropriate for every student. Yes, um, I, I would agree with that. And I mean, there are some parents who've said we're just entirely overwhelmed. Please just mail a packet and let's be done with it. And that's perfectly fine. And you know, I'm kind of reading through the com the comments here. Um, and it, it really is just whatever is going to work for that child, that teacher, that parent. That's what we're doing. And just providing that related service in any way possible. Um, you know, and I, I have had some teachers reach out and say, can you provide me with some exercises or some some activities that we can do on our on our in our classroom? You know, absolutely. And, uh, you know, really now the parent really is the teacher in a lot of ways. So supporting them and helping them is also supporting their, you know, their academic goals because the parents are carrying all of this out right now. So I, I totally agree with that of, you know, providing that um, instruction in any way possible, even if it is, you know, kind of pushing in on the Zoom classrooms. Um, I see Yesenia here was talking about, you know, about not a lot of kids are interested in this. If if you guys have not started um, calling parents and kind of feeling out the interest for it, you'll be surprised at the amount of parents that would rather do packets or phone calls or just check in every once in a while. Um, I have probably had, I'm going to say on average in different counties, I'm going to say like six or seven that are interested in direct therapy via the telemodel. So I don't want you guys to think that if you have a caseload of 50 kids that you're going to be seeing all 50 kids, you know, via Zoom or team. That that's that's really not going to happen. Um more more in my experience and you guys can agree or disagree, but um more of the parents I have worked with have been, have not been interested in teletherapy versus the parents who are interested in teletherapy. Okay. Um have I worked with, I'm sorry, Libby, if you see any other questions that I'm kind of. Uh, there was a question about liability. How do you feel about the liability issues? That's from, um, uh, I forget, I, I saw it, but I didn't write down the name. As um, talking about like FERPA and HIPAA specifically. Uh, I think they're also just concerned about doing some of these things via telepractice. It was Laura Eastwood. <clears throat> okay. And I can yeah, address I mean, the HIPAA and FERPA things real quickly while you're looking at that, Annie. HIPAA, I mean, um, the Office of Civil Rights um, loosened the requirements for HIPAA and FERPA doing the COVID, during the COVID-19 pandemic on March um, 18th. So they've opened it up to even allow platforms such as Facebook um, and that kind of thing. So, I mean, not Facebook, I'm sorry, FaceTime. And, and those kinds of platforms. So your special ed director has a list of the platforms, has a comparison list and the costs and the, the security and that kind of thing. Be sure and talk with them. Um, they can advise you and they're the ones who should select the platform for your county. Yes. And um, Alex, I, I agree with a lot of the liability. There are some things that we would do when we're one-on-one -on -one with, our, with our kids that we're just not gonna be able to do right now. So if you even feel slightly uneasy about something or you think all oh, this parent can't carry this out or you would think there's a risk of them being injured absolutely do not do those activities right now um you know i've had to modify a, a lot of of treatment plans or things i would normally do just because we are doing this with parents and um you know via telepractice and i and i don't have that ability to reach to the screen and grab them if they would um do something dangerous like I know specifically with like scissors and things like that, like I've been very careful about what parents I would send scissor activities to or things like that. But again, just use your best professional judgment. If you even have an inkling of <laughs> this is not going to work out or I think this could be dangerous, absolutely don't do it, you know, on, on your telepractice. Okay. And have you worked with more severe autism, um, severely involved students? Um, yes, I have. So, I feel like that's been more of like a, a coaching model and everything, but um, with, with parents. But one person I was going to have um, 
kind of do like a little guest lecture for us on Friday. His name is Aaron and he is he does telespeech full time and he's actually great with working with the severe profound kids. So I was going to have him come on, maybe give us some like little tips and tricks of of how he does that and what he does to keep them engaged. But it's not impossible. Um, I have found that I have to use more kind of like games and you know interactive things on the computer to to keep their attention. But it has worked and it 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 is working. So like I said, I will have him on Friday, or I will have him give me a little presentation of of tips and everything that we can use for our severe profound kids. Um, Vivian, you said exactly, I don't know what you're saying exactly to my severe has not been interested. Um, yeah, I would agree. I, I think the vast majority of my severe profound kids or ha have not been interested in the one-on-one -on -one teletherapy, but they have been interested in more of like a parent coaching model of me kind of logging on with them, showing them activities and kind of guiding them through, um, some good activities just to keep their kids um, engaged. So I've been using that, you know, that model, which is almost kind of like an indirect model. But um, again, we're just doing whatever works for that family and what they're interested in. Um, parent to, to stretch a child this way, they did it wrong and they hurt the child. Does that come back on me? Um, I'm. Leanne, do you have a, a concrete answer for that? That What's hard right now is they've pretty much waived so many laws and regulations and everything. Um, I'm going to say no. And I think it's a lot different than a typical telepractice scenario where you have a trained facilitator, you know, usually carrying out these things. But with a, with a parent, um, I don't see how that could come back on you. But... Leanne, do you have another answer for that? I would just reiterate what you said a while ago. If there's anything that needs to be done with that student that you feel is dangerous, that the parent might do incorrectly, or, um, you know, you can't really supervise appropriately through um, the teletherapy model, then please don't do that. You know, if they receive private therapy or, mm -hmm. um, you know, some other means to get the, the um, stretching or whatever it is they need that, that might be dangerous. Um, you know, I know it brings up a huge dilemma for you guys, because in some of these cases, they need that exercise or they need that stretching. But anything that would put the student um, or you in jeopardy, um, I would definitely try not to do it uh, at all. But, you know, explain to the parent why you're not. Um, you know, some parents, if you've worked in the home, especially homebound students, when you've gone in the homes and you've taught, taught the parents how to do the stretching and that kind of thing, you'll know which parents will be comfortable doing it and doing it appropriately and which ones will not. And I would, you know, base my decisions on what to ask them to do on that. Okay. And, and ultimately, sure. yeah, ultimately, if something happens, it's the school system's responsibility because you're an employee. But just, you know, I would definitely be careful. Yes, and um, Cheryl, I see you kind of have the same um, concern there. And like I said, again, it's just, it's it's not going to be a typical session. You're not going to be able to do a lot of the things you would typically do. And we're, we're just doing the very best that we can. So, um, Jennifer, I see on here where you see there's some gross motor PowerPoints on Teachers Pay Teachers. I, I agree. I have found some really great resources on Teachers Pay Teachers. And um, again, it's more about like, or I use more for like my gross motor activities or something. I use a lot of pictures of, you know, videos if you have them. And still, even then, if you're providing pictures, videos, explaining things to parents, still don't do anything that you think, oh, they could mess this up and hurt the child. You know, you may have to focus more on just general exercises or um, activities right now instead of those specific stretches just because we, we just cannot take that chance of a, a child getting hurt. Oh, okay, but you're talking about the related services and supporting the teachers. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I, I think, um, like I said, a lot of ways it's been a great thing because I feel like a lot of parents are, are really starting to understand what we do and how to be involved and um, how to help their child achieve their goals. And also the teachers as well, you know, trying to provide um, – little activities for the teachers that can also work on these child or these children's goals. 
Okay. Annette, she um, found a good tutorial on basic stretches and sent them to the parents. Yeah, again, just, just using your, your best judgment and um, um, professional judgment there. Sent self stretches exercises. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea, too, for the kids that are that are able to do those themselves that you could send them like a little exercise routine that they could carry out themselves and um, do it that way. Jennifer Annette, will you share your resources on teens? Yeah, would would you guys please do that? And that's, um, you know, one of the critical pieces of the team site is that we can, you know, we can do everything in the chat. We can share these resources and get some great ideas and help each other. Okay. I'm just going to say one thing while you're looking at more questions, Annie. Um, if you do share your Teachers Pay Teachers documents, please don't load, download them and share the full document itself. Don't do it as an attachment. Give us the link to that free Teachers Pay Teachers um, activity so that the, the um, seller can get the, um, the credit that that was downloaded from them. And you just have to have a free Teachers Pay Teachers account to download it. Yeah. And... Um... Yeah, make sure, because I, I have seen some things shared that technically you should have a license or separate licenses for. So just make sure that what you're sharing is actually free and not just um, a copy. Okay. So do you guys have anything else for right now? Um, what about assistance providing um, treatment? That was the last question, assistance providing okay. treatment. As as far as I know, as far as um, PT and, and OT go, I know speech is a lot different. They have a lot of different um, regulations, but um, we've just been doing like telesessions where I just jump on their visit and observe and um, supervise them that way. But I do know they have waived a lot of the supervision requirements for now. For speech, we actually upped our supervision and make, made the supervisor um, supervise the first session with with okay. the PT with the assistant, and then um, you know 25% of the other sessions. But I know you guys have a little bit different uh, regulations too, as far as being able to do the sessions individual, I mean independently, but not evaluations. Okay. So um, just keep that in mind. Well, OT is actually. Um very lax in the schools where we only need actually one supervision visit technically per year. So as long as all the documentation supervised and everything, you know, we're, we're technically good to go as long as we're supervising that child once per year. Um, PT is once per every 30 days, I believe. So um, for our PTAs, we're just having the supervising PT hop on you know, every other week or so just to, to monitor and maintain. But um, after talking to the, the OT and PT boards, I mean, I think everybody's just kind of still kind of up in the air with, um, you know, exact supervision requirements because they know it's just not going to be possible, you know, at this time to carry on how we normally do. I don't know how many of you are, are a lot of you supervising PTAs and in, in CODAs? Is that something that, I mean, if, if you guys want, we can go over that again on Friday and I will call the boards again. But supervision requirements were different if you were billing Medicaid. Okay. Okay. I will double check on that. I'll call them again because I called them very early on in the um, process here and something may have changed. So I will double check with that. And I will, I mean, I heard back when I heard Medicaid mentioned, it reminded me, I heard back from Kelly Johnson and she said that PTs and OTs are allowed to build TCM, but traditionally they don't because they're too busy seeing students. Okay. Okay. Um, I see Lori here says I'm a CODA yeah, and that that was the last that I heard. And of course, with OT, we, we probably have the most lax regulations of, of anyone. So 
our supervision particularly is not as difficult to keep up as a speech or PT. Um, if any of you have talked to the PT board since about the middle of March. Oh, OK, so you're talking specifically for for Medicaid billing. Um, to be honest, you know, for the assistance, we weren't even billing Medicaid for them because we, we cannot provide that direct on site supervision. Um, so we were just, you know, just trying to get their treatment minutes in or their treatments um, or their, you know, IEP requirements. We have not been billing Medicaid for assistance because of that reason. But that is something, again, that I can check with that if they're considering a direct supervision, if you're directly in that session via Zoom or, or Teams, if they would consider that direct on-site supervision, I don't know. But we can double check with them. Paula, I think your question about TCM, I mean, I think Kelly responded to the question in normal times. You know, in normal times when we're not doing teletherapy, that's when that could the P, PTs and OTs could build TCM if they if they perform those activities. You know, check with your special education director. But I know in a lot of cases, uh, people aren't even billing Medicaid right now um, because yeah. of the services they're being offered. So um, don't get caught up in, in Medicaid right now. I mean, providing the service is the most important thing. And um, I have had a lot of um, questions, too, about direct versus consult. So like if you are like, let's say you have a, a child with or with a parent and you think, well, I kind of coached the parent through 15 minutes of it and I kind of was, was direct with the child for 15 minutes of it. How do I build that? And really, you just use your best judgment. If you say, I really feel like 15 minutes of that was consult or indirect, bill 15 minutes indirect, bill 15 minutes direct. You know, there, there's really not going to be a cut and dry answer it's really just going to be your your best clinical judgment of what you felt that session was. The way I've been doing it is if if the child is in the frame sitting there working, I'm billing that as direct time. So even if I'm kind of talking to the parent and they're facilitating and but the child's there, I'm billing that as direct therapy. If I'm just talking to parents and the kids in and out zipping around, they're over here and they come by and say hi and then they go over there, but I'm you know, the more of the session is coaching that parent on how to do this activity, I'm billing that indirect time or, or coaching. Um, Alexa, I typically use Zoom. Um, I think Zoom will run on a lower bandwidth typically, and um, I've just had good success with it, but I know there's people are using a lot of different platforms and really it's up to your um, county of what they prefer or what they're recommending. That did address supervision. Okay, so they, they put that out in April because I hadn't talked to them since the middle of March. So I will I will call them again and get updated on that. Thank you, Darlene. So for Friday, is there anything specifically you guys would like to see, like in a video, um, like a, a specific type of session? Correct. You you cannot you cannot bill Medicaid for indirect services. So if you do have if typically like your let's say your kid is 120 a month of direct services and you say, OK, we had a 30 minute session, but I feel like, you know, the child wasn't even by the computer. I just coached mom for 30 minutes. You're still going to bill 30 minutes indirect, you know, and whether or not that they're probably not going to bill that for Medicaid, obviously, but that's just what we got from that session. Okay, just see a couple sessions if possible. Okay, session with autism. All right, guys, well, I don't want to keep you too long here. So, um, does anyone have any more questions? Okay. Um, if not, we are going to meet 
or we're going to call OT telepracticing on Friday, May 1st at 1 p.m. And you guys can hop on that the same way you did this. And we can um, go over some treatment ideas and go over like little videos and stuff, some tips and tricks to get everybody started and helping each other. But don't forget to hop on the team's group and look through that, look through the files, um, frequently ask questions and the chat feature um, so that we can get started with that to kind of help each other out and get the, those things full of resources for everybody. It is a lot to think about, Cheryl. <laughs> I feel like all this has been a lot to think about. It is. The, the nice thing is it's not just West Virginia. It's not just your county. It's the whole nation. And it's not just us. It's all service providers, teachers. Everyone's having to learn this. So, you know, it's it's a lot to think about. But you know what? We can do it. And I think in the future, having this tool in your tool belt of things you can do is going to be very valuable. So the sooner you get comfortable with it, know the resources and, and you know, know the protocols and that kind of thing, I think the better off you're going to be. Um, I would like to say again, um, if you would, please join the telepracticing team. That's, that will give you access to the um, resources that Amy's talked about. You'll see the OT and PT tab. Libby already has it ready. And um, that will also give you, sorry, just one second. That will also give you the opportunity to um, ask questions and that kind of thing. Um, the information that was sent out yesterday about these trainings, the link for Friday is different than the one for today, but the link for Friday is designated and that's one you will use every Friday to join that. It's a repeating meeting. So you'll join it every Friday through that link. Yeah. Annie, thank you so much for spending this time with us and giving them so much information. I'm sure it's nice for you guys just to be able to talk to somebody else about all this and not feel like you're out there all alone. So thank you so much for, for, for doing this for us. Yeah. And yeah, thank you guys for coming. Like I said, I'm, I'm really new to this too. I know I have a lot of background with, with teletherapy, but me doing this, you know, myself with, with my kids, it, it's been new for me too. And it's been a huge learning curve. So I'm really excited to see what you guys have to say and what you've come up with too, because I think I've seen so many amazing things that therapists have done and come up with and have really helped support um, the parents and everything. And I think what Leanne said is really important that we really need to get proficient at this and because we don't know when this is going to end. You know, I mean, we don't know if we're going back in August and this may be longer than we think. And I know that most counties are going to virtual ESY. So you know, this is not something that I think is going to go away quickly. And I think it's it's a great skill to learn and be proficient at because we don't know what this will look like in the future. And we may, we may be using teleservices with our kids, even when we do go back to school for some kids. So I'm kind of glad we can all learn this together and help each other out while we do it. All right. Well, thank you guys for being here, too. And like I said, I will post the link to this video within our team's group and you can access it at any time. Libby, thank you so much for helping us with all this and for setting up our notebooks and all the resources that are, are available for everyone. Um, I think they're going to be amazed when they see the information we already have. So thank you. Yep. Thank you. And I hope people will add to the resources because I think this is a great place to share and, you know, you, you may actually like telepractice so much that in some instances for somebody was talking the other day about, um, you know, students who like uh, from like November on are homebound because they're so sick and you yes. can still do some some telepractice with them, uh, you know, and, and maintain a contact with them. So I think there's some some future opportunities as well. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Or. I mean, I think about things like snow days. I mean, I would I would think even like things like snow days or extended school closures, like they may have us do telepractice some way or another, or even just supporting teachers. Well, I really appreciate all the collaboration we're going to be able to foster through this group. And I wanted to mention, too, I know a lot of OTs and PTs are contracted therapists. And just because you have you do not have a K-12 address doesn't mean you can't join our team. So if you are contracted, you don't have a K-12 email, K-12 email address, please email me and I will add you personally to the team. My email is L Brammer, B-R-A-M-M-E-R at k12.wv.us and I can add you. Thank you.
All right, guys. Well, um, I'm going to 